the Miami Dolphins have brought back three players who coincidentally all played for the last Dolphins team to win a playoff game. In 2004, the Dolphins beat the Colts in the wildcard round of the playoffs and lost the following week. Patrick Sertain, Wes Welker, and Sam Madison were all playing for the Dolphins. Now, they are all coaches on the Dolphins staff. It would seem that this little ploy is window dressing but in all honesty, it is far from it. It is a gateway to the future and a visible sign of what Mike McDaniel is looking for in his staff. It is often said that the best cornerback duo in Miami history was Madison and Sertain and maybe the two can bring something extra to the Dolphins secondary this year and in the years to come. Maybe not. Maybe Wes Welker can bring his experience as a player to a unit that could use a little more moxie. Sam Madison. Madison will take over the Dolphins cornerbacks. He will coach as the team's defensive passing game coordinator as well. Madison became an NFL coach in 2019 when he joined the Chiefs as a secondary coach. Will he be a good coach in Miami? Well for starters, he will have a much better unit to work with immediately and should be able to relate to the players one-on-one. -on -one. Madison is qualified for the job but while fans have been applauding the hire and the fact that Madison is long overdue to being a part of the Dolphins again, there is still growth he needs to go through. Patrick Sertain. The hiring of Sertain seemed a bit odd at first. He has never coached in the NFL before but as a head coach in South Florida, he has state championships under his belt. His role in Miami is an entry-level move. He will be a defensive assistant and it opens the door for him to move into the NFL coaching ranks. This is his start and at some point, every coach enters the league at the bottom. Maybe this will open a new long career as an NFL coach. Regardless, the Dolphins are getting someone back who represents their history and at the same time will learn the ropes. Wes Welker. Everyone remembers the trade that sent Welker to the Patriots for two second-round draft picks. Everyone also remembers how Welker became one of the best wide receiver for the Patriots and eventually paved the way for Julian Edelman to get all the accolades as well. As a coach, Welker began his career with the Texans in 2017 as an offensive assistant and special teams assistant. He spent two seasons with the Texans before joining the 49ers as their wide receiver coach. The job he held from 2019 to 2021 before leaving to follow McDaniel. Welker has quality experience as a wide receiver coach, the same job he will hold in Miami. When you look at the three together you would immediately see three guys being brought in to make the fanbase happy but in reality, they have something to bring to the table. They may lack the experience that some others have had in the last couple of years but not by much. The new additions are young and eager and driven and that seems to be what McDaniel epitomizes himself. In that vein, it makes sense and is pretty cool too. Should the Miami Dolphins tag tight end Mike Jasicki? There is a lot of talk among the blogging crowd and fans if Mike Jasicki will be a fit in the new system Mike McDaniel will install. The beat writers might even be picking up on this soon. The big setback is the emphasis on blocking and the lack of it from Mike Jasicki. Former head coach Adam Gase had Mike mostly blocking early on in an attempt to instill it in him, unfortunately this hasn't worked. Until new head coach Mike McDaniel comes out and says any intentions on the use of Jasicki, we are all left in the dark. One other thing I'd like to hear from McDaniel is if a Miami Dolphins offensive line can stand up to stunts being run against them. Poor Jasicki has film on him doing a pirouette followed by what looks to be the old disco dance the bump trying to block something like this. Wait until McDaniel has a look at this clip. The Miami Dolphins haven't used any kind of tag going on four seasons now, but that doesn't mean it couldn't happen this time. The term is tag and trade, and although it seems straightforward and simple it can get pretty messy, and maybe this is why the Miami Dolphins seem to stray from using any kind of tag. The three types of tags are exclusive, non-exclusive, and transition. With exclusive the player can only negotiate exclusively with that team. With non-exclusive the player can negotiate with other teams but if that team picks up the player it then owes the team a pair of first round picks. The transition is having the player able to negotiate, with the team able to match any offer. Of these three, the Miami Dolphins haven't used the non-exclusive tag as much as the other two, and maybe it's time to give it a try. Mike Jasicki has talent and value but do other teams see it as worth two first round picks and a new contract? This might be a gamble worth taking. Stockpiling draft picks into the future can be advantageous, as much flack as general manager Chris Greer has taken there are three first round picks from the last year's draft that are looking pretty good right about now. Mike Jasicki has been used as a proxy wide receiver who lines up mostly in the slot and with a knack for finding seams, getting the ball, and yardage after the catch. There must be teams out there that would place a higher value than what we're hearing from this new system about to be installed.
If the Miami Dolphins gamble and lose the bet on a team wanting to give up picks and signing away Mike, keeping him on the team at what would be a lower price than on the free market wouldn't be all that bad. At the very least a compensatory pick would be coming with his loss to free agency.